uh, but nonetheless, we have Mr. Emerson, who will be joining us and telling us today about this. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah, so please proceed. OK. Uh, Good afternoon. Wow. OK, so I, I hope your Congress has been good so far and you're not too hungover or too tired. Uh, so today I am talking along with my colleagues from Sierra Leone, if uh, Skype works, if the Skype... Yes. Hooray! Yes. yes! Awesome! All right, guys. Make some noise. Let them know that you're here. All right. Awesome. So... Great. So um, today our, our talk is um, about what, uh, by most standards, would be considered a miracle, uh, because it, so a little bit of an so here's the structure of the talk. So uh, um, I'm going to give like a two-minute out introduction. Um, there is a bit of an out. You can see the structure of the talk, and then uh, we're just going to uh, crack into it. So introduction. My name is Emerson Tan. Uh, for six months between uh, October uh, 2014 and April 2015, I was the country coordinator for a consortium of NGOs called NetHope. And NetHope is a consortium of 33 of the world's largest NGOs, which specializes in, and the consortium um, specializes in uh, technology and uh, IT and development. Um, and I was dispatched to Sierra Leone to be the country coordinator with the world's vaguest orders because they could not find anyone who wanted to go. So I got three people's salaries and they just said, go there and improve things. And then the orders just stopped. So uh, that's what I tried to do. Um, these guys, so uh, Sultan, can you uh, yeah. wave? Okay, that's Sultan. Harold? Uh, that's Harold. Francis? Yo. OK, so these guys are from IDT Labs. And uh, these guys are, are based in Freetown in Sierra Leone. Uh, that's Sierra Leone. You can see up, see up there. Um, and these guys are all self-taught programmers, um, self-taught hackers. You know, they, and these guys basically saved their country from complete collapse. And I can't possibly begin to describe how many lives were saved as a result of their work. And in, indeed, you know, we could have lost the whole of West Africa. Anyway, so, and this is basically their story. So, see a bit of an introduction. This is Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is roughly the size of Ireland. It's on the west coast of uh, West Africa. Um, it's uh, got about six and a half million people thereabouts. Nobody really actually knows because, uh, you know, the census is kind of rubbish. And, um, it's the si <laughs> yeah, right. It's the sixth poorest country on earth officially, um, and that was before Ebola, the Ebola epidemic. Um, it had a civil war between 1991 and 2002, uh, and that is the source of so many movies like, you know, Blood Diamond, and you know, like, you know, you, you get people like Leonardo DiCaprio running around going like, oh my God, look at those blood diamonds and people and civil war and you know, all this sort of madness, and that's. Before Ebola, that's what Sierra Leone was really famous for. It was famous for a grotesque civil war and, uh, and, and being very, very poor. But it's, it's really rich in diamonds and gold and minerals and the rest of it, which is why everyone likes to fight over the place. Yeah, it's kind of shit. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it also has uh, only 150 meters of fiber optic cable in the entire country. And it goes from the cable landing station up to this sort of like microwave tower, and then the rest of the country is all point-to-point -point microwave. So if the Skype connection goes down, it probably will be because it started raining or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so I could bang on for hours about Sierra Leone and uh, Ebola, but uh, helpfully, a documentary crew came oh, and God. followed me around. We are in... Sierra Leone doing an Ebola That's documentary. Joel and Mike. The later part of the signs and symptoms bleeding from all openings, bleeding from the ears, the eyes red. That is the end part here. When you see an Ebola patient suffering from those conditions, obviously there is no hope. 
since Ebola came, school have just been stopped. Business is not going normal again like the way it was. Ebola has overtaken the whole nation, and so students can't come because of the risk. Our country is suffering. We don't know the way our country is going. We don't know the trend of our nation. We don't know what we are heading to. We don't know our future. Our children are suffering. No education. They have been locked up. No movement. Everything is going backward. You know, the Haiti earthquake, Katrina, tsunami, all these things raise a billion and a half dollars. But we don't see the same public outcry here. Within one week, the whole house, then they affected. All man is vomiting now. Within they say, other, within they say one day, then the two man will be left for sick. Within a, a day, three people then die, one greedy. They will uh, worry, the tongue will uh, 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 worry, really what them poil, everything poil. So, the brother has to let me now, we now, they don't stretch the weed, they say, we're not going to go inside now for day, because we them not have to go inside now. So, they're not to farm all on poil. Ebola will be defeated in Sierra Leone, um, but, but in the meantime, people are suffering. We saw some examples last month where people couldn't go to the, the farms at the edge of the village, but because the village was under quarantine, those people then had to sit there for three weeks, relying on food aid, not being able to collect the, the rice harvest, which then is clearly going to have knock-on impacts down the road. We came to Sierra Leone because we wanted to tell the story. There's people who are on the front lines here, so many heroes, so many people who are working to battle this disease, this outbreak, and with honestly very little help. And this is a war. Losing my friend does not mean that I must not partake to the, in the war. So it's my duty to partake. Because if I didn't volunteer to help my people, who will help them? That's the question I've been asking myself. That's why I decided to come and render the little care I can to my people. My name is Asiatu M. Ansari. I'm an Ebola fighter. My name is Lieutenant Ba. I'm an Ebola fighter. Hi, my name is Joe and I'm an Ebola fighter. I am an Ebola fighter. I am an Ebola fighter. I'm Daniel Ndamukunda. I'm an Ebola fighter. My name is Dr. Vincent Batwala. My name is Young Samuel. My name is Aminata Eskabia. My name is Mayatu Frances Bangwa, and I'm an Ebola fighter. I want to ask the world to see Sierra Unions and even Liberians and Guineans who have had this crisis to see us as human beings. We are all the same. We should not be stigmatized. So, um, that, little, that, that little trailer does a much better job than I ever could of um, uh, summarizing. Um, it's a war, you know, uh, and in wars, people die. And what happened was that the disease ripped its way through the already very fragile health system. The first, some of the first people to start dying in significant numbers were nurses and doctors and medical staff. And the system just started to collapse. The country came, all, act, all activity in, in, in the country essentially came to a, a halt. Um, commerce stopped, schools stopped, everything stopped. And it looked like there for a while that it was just, you know, right, it would rip through the, the population of the country, and the UN finally declared a, 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 an international health emergency, um, set up a special uh, UN mission, and then you saw all of these um, countries like the US um, and the UK start to mobilize their militaries to actually start to, to, to help Liberia and Sierra Leone um, and Guinea start to respond to the crisis. And I arrived in uh, October uh, on a, an aircraft with really, with some of the real first wave of like experienced humanitarian and, uh, and um, medical workers from uh, outside. And I don't know, is, so there's a, there should be a fellow here from eHealth Africa. 
don't know if he's here. There he is. Yeah, so I showed up. Um, so I was the only technologist. I thought I was the only technologist on the plane, but it turns out I was wrong. Um, it turns out that uh, Kristen from uh, um, eHealth Africa was on the plane. And uh, I have to salute this man up here, if you can't see, he's behind you, um, for being brave. Stand up. Uh, <laughs> for being brave enough to uh, actually get on the plane, because in, uh, back in August and September, um, essentially, um, if you went, if you were considering going, people, everyone thought that you were going to die. Um, I went to a friend's wedding the week before I left, and uh, I got talking to the priest, and the priest is like, oh, well, no, what do you do? And, yeah, I'm going to Sierra Leone, I'm doing this, that, and the other, and he just stops, and then he just gave me the blessing, you know, my hand comes out, you know, you know a bit of holy oil, you know, on the forehead and the rest of it, says something in English, and then he mutters something in, in Latin, and it turns out, actually, that he used to be a battlefield, you know, chaplain, and he actually gave me the last rite. It's like, thanks, asshole. <laughs> so pl plainly it didn't work, because I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so the, the, the UN, uh, the UN WHO um, come up with this strategy to arrest the spread of the disease. Ben they call it bending the line. And what this does is it gets you from a, a situation where everything's going up exponentially, you know, outbreak, contagion, Dustin Hoffman, panic, to a situation where actually everything levels out and you get control of the disease. And then from that point onwards, the, 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 the trajectory is downhill. And that was 70% of all um, people who've died of Ebola buried safely and 70% of all live cases in isolation, so they can't infect other people in the community. There's only some, that sounds great on paper, you know, because you're like, well, you know, that, that's easy, you know, because there's only small problems with that, because, you know, like, the health system has evaporated and ceased to exist. Um, there are only two major paved highways outside of Freetown. Am I right? I'm right in thinking that, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, well, it depends on your definition of paved. Um, <laughs> there's no functioning power grid. Um, there's no functioning running water in most places. The mobile phone network only extends to about 40% of the country. Uh, oh, shit, this, this is actually a lot hard. So, so these numbers look great on paper, but it's actually much harder than you think. And we're going to need an army because, you know, at one point, so before the crisis, Sierra Leone had one doctor for every 50,000 people. So to give you an idea, Germany per thousand people, sorry, per, I think, yeah, per thousand people has 38.9 doctors per thousand people here in Germany. They have one doctor for 50,000 people. That's quite a lot. <laughs> You know, that's quite a waiting line, you know, they are waiting to see the doctor and the rest of it. It's like, okay, you're number 49,578, you know, <laughs> please don't die before, you, before the doctor will see you. <laughs> okay, there's some fucking grim humour there. Um, so, you know, so, so it's like, right, okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to need to reconstitute the entire health service from scratch. So... It was decided that the, with the NGOs and the British would build, the British Army would build 18 of these Ebola treatment centers, community care centers, we'd hire thousands of contact tracers, hundreds of safe burial teams, hundreds of ambulance drivers, hundreds of disinfection teams, all the lab staff, and then all of this would have to be coordinated with like command centers run by the army, you know, rapid response teams. Um, the 117 emergency line, which, eHealth Africa, I have to give credit for sorting that one out. Good work. Um, the lab reporting system, um, I ended up being deeply involved in rolling out a lot of the infrastructure, like all these VSAT-based internet to key facilities, thousands of mobile phones, SAT phones, BGAN units, so this, and this huge infrastructure expansion project. And it all has to happen within about, you know, six to eight weeks. 
because that's, I sat down, when I first got there, I got dragged into a lot of this largely by accident, and I got dragged into this high-level meeting, because it's like, well, you know, you're the technology guy, you know how to set this stuff up. Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, like, come to this meeting and we'll, we'll have a discussion about uh, the way the country is going and what needs to be done. And this very senior, uh, this very senior uh, UN official um, in, gives the frankest briefing I've ever heard when he said, right, okay, well, basically, um, we have like a couple of months or um, we're going to lose the region. We might lose all three countries. And right now, there are people in New York who are making contingency plans for millions of deaths. And that's quite sobering. Um, and a difficult, you know, so you have to take a minute, center yourself, think through the problems, and try not to get overwhelmed. So, um, right, I'm going to take a quick break here. Let's see how much time I've got. To um, talk a minute about some of the principles of a successful intervention, because this isn't exactly obvious. Um, and so, and these are all backed by little stories. So be on the ground, not remote. So I went, Christian went. Lots of people didn't. Uh, we had loads of offers of help. Uh, Google, bless them, you know, IBM, bless them, and others. And their condition was, it's like, yeah, we're really willing to help. We'll, we'll, this is going to be awesome. We're, we're going to apply all our vast technolog technological prowess to this. But we're going to do it remotely. We're going to do it from London or, or California because, you know, like, you know, if, if I get on a plane, hey, man, I might die. And, you know, and my insurance doesn't cover this shit. So, uh, no. So they totally chickened out. And uh, unfortunately, you cannot develop systems quickly um, where there are complex business processes and local conditions remotely. You just can't do it. So those guys, thanks, guys. Thanks, but no thanks. Sorry. Make use of local resources and people. These guys understood the environment intimately. They, 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 they know how everything works or doesn't work. I mean, the classic example is uh, we had to hire data entry clerks. And hiring a data entry clerk here is really pretty easy. You know, you get some CVs and you read the CVs and you go, oh, look, you know, you can read and write and you appear to be vaguely bright. You know, sure, I will hire you. Great, you can type. Sierra Leone is a little bit different because most people's CVs are completely meaningless. You know, there are lots and lots of words, and you know, that doesn't actually mean very much. So what these guys did was they came up with an English comprehension and literacy test. It was hilarious. I don't know if you remember that, um, especially the bit where the, the instructions were wrong. You know, yes. I think this is one of France's. So the instructions on this literacy test were wrong. If you didn't question the instructions, you failed. <laughs> because what that meant was you couldn't actually read the instructions and understand that they were wrong, or you knew that they were wrong, but you were, too, you, 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 know, you were too timid to actually say, hey, this is wrong. And we don't want people like that, because they'll be dealing with messy data, which, which, which will be a mess. You know? So um, yeah, 183 people applied. How many did we hire in the end? Um, about, about 30. 13. So, yeah. yeah, so from a, a, from a pool of 180 people who respite, replied to the advert, we ended up with 13 who could actually read, write, and actually like, question what they were reading, which is kind of amazing. The real literacy rate, in, officially the literacy rate in Sierra Leone is 35%. The real literacy rate, i.e. comprehension, and being able to actually work it out is under 20%. That's one in five, fewer than one in five people can read and write and enumerate and are competent. That's shockingly bad compared to Germany where your literacy rate is over 99%. Okay, this is a very difficult environment to work in. So next principle is Take chances and fight inertia. Right, so um, you're not supposed to hire people like these. None of these guys here is like, you know, over the age of 40. Um, you know, they all use this sort of like dodgy open source stuff. 
Did you install stuff? <laughs> Yay! Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, it's like normally for a big, e for, for a huge ERP deployment, who do you go to? You go to like SAP or, or Accenture or, you know, whichever, whichever fucking ones want your money. Um, what you don't do is you don't go to a guy, bunch of guys who work out of, you know, like a, what's effectively a converted garage. But the only difference is, is SAP might not actually care whether the project succeeds. These guys really care. They care a lot. So I put my, so when I, when, when, when me and the team that were, that were looking at all these problems um, started thinking about this, you know, I was like, look, we've got to use local talent. They're the only people who actually really understand how everything works. And, you know, like they're, hev they're much more heavily invested in success than anybody else. We have to use the locals. Um, and then we bullied the United Nations Development Program into paying for it all. They really didn't want to, but their lead, we, we talked the leadership round and the rest of it, and then they took ownership and, you know, of, of the process, and it became a smashing success. So, you know, all for the best. Um, use open source software, reuse and leverage what exists. Um, this is kind of critical and what this talk is largely about, because what you'll see later on is that none of this would be possible without open source software, without open source frameworks, um, without being able to leverage all of that historic work um, that has gone into this, because you could not possibly develop systems this quickly um, for such low amounts of money in this sort of environment, with this kind of robustness, without the existence of this huge open source ecosystem. And the huge size of the open source ecosystem and the fact that it covers everything, including like really boring things like accounting and ERP and, and uh, um, you know, like logistics management and stuff like this, means that you know, like there are open source solutions for all of this. And what that enables you to do is draw on all of that and be able to spin up things very, very quickly. Um, and then plan how you're going to leave. Because um, the problem here is that most NGOs, most development aid projects don't plan to leave. They just show up. They show up, and they make stuff and the rest of it. The locals don't build any of their own stuff. They don't own any of it. And then the funding runs out. The uh, white guys fuck off back home. Job done. Uh, and then what happens is, is that their country fills up with garbage. Because like a, a good example might be um, uh, you go to the hospitals, and what you find are all these piles and piles and piles of old ubiquity, um, you know, little ubiquity uh, uh, nanostations and stuff like this. And it's like, what is this doing in a pile? And it's like, well, the money ran out, and then you know, the satellite link went away, and then all this stuff broke down, and then we just sort of like, just threw it all in a box. You know, and that was the uh, military hospital up in, uh, up in mm. Wilkinson. And so, you know, yeah. there, there are pictures of me with, like, you know, piles of old ubiquity gear taken apart and me fixing it because it was like, right, well, this is stuff we don't have to buy. If you plan to leave, what that means is, is that you ensure that you have somebody there who will take ownership of what is built. And once they have ownership of it, it means that they're responsible for its onward development, irrespective of whether they get funding from outside or not. So for example, the stuff that Sultan and uh, these guys have done is, you know, it, it's available, it can be reused, and hopefully it will be reused um, in the reconstituted Sierra Leonean Health Service. Am I right in thinking that they're actually going to do that? Maybe. Uh, yes, yes, um, it, 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 it's been done now. Okay, well, there you go. See, that, that, it, it, you know, we can make it happen. But you have to plan to leave. You, you, you never want to stay there forever, and you never want to actually patronize people by just giving them things forever. You know? They have to learn to stand on their own two feet. Open source software, open source ecosystem allows them to do that. So anyway, OK, so you know, let's, uh, let's have a talk here about um, how, uh, what, what these guys actually had to do. Uh, so, uh, you know, management information system, paying people. And this bit here, actually, I'm going to get you guys to actually start pitching in on this, because uh, I've, I've talked for far too long, and, uh, you know, these guys are probably bored of hearing my voice. 
So, some challenges. Um, you know, so there's some pressure. The health system had more or less collapsed. Um, we have to hire, you know, a couple of tens of thousands of nurses and medical staff and contact tracers and all these other guys. And uh, it turns out in the old Sierra Leone health system, nobody gets paid for months, possibly ever. Uh, and when we got there, we were presented with uh, the, 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 the payment system for the old Sierra Leone medical system. I didn't take a photo of it. It was three A, you know, like A4 boxes of copier paper? Yeah, like that. They just literally just dumped these boxes of, I don't know if you remember the, 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 the files, when they just dumped the paper and it's just like, there you go, that's, that's what we've got. Uh, and it was, a bit of a, it was a bit of a mess. So nobody gets paid, and what that does is it forces people to be corrupt. It forces people to take money from patients, which is extraordinarily dangerous in this context. Um, it also undermines people's confidence in the health system. And basically, it means that it, the, the whole thing becomes just horribly untrustworthy. And because people weren't being paid for months on end, um, they went on strike. And then you started seeing scenes like this. Uh, these are from actually from Liberia, press pictures from Liberia. But you saw bodies in the streets. Um, on one occasion, I, uh, um, there was a strike and patients weren't being fed. So they just broke out. <laughs> like these are, you know, like Ebola patients, and they just broke out and just started running around looking for food because, you know, the healthcare workers had gone on strike because they hadn't been paid for six months. So, you know, like, Strikes, civil disorder, riots, the rest of society shut down. If the epidemic doesn't go, stop, you know, like abating, you know, this senior official in another meeting says, you guys have got six weeks to come up with a working solution to um, pay everybody or, uh, or the country's fucked. <laughs> and they actually use that word because that's, and that's not normal, you know. There's a you know, middle-aged guy, and it's basically like, right, you know, it's like you either come up with something or, or we're going to have to think of something else, and it's going to be very ugly. Uh, and the story basically goes that after this, these, 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 you know, during one of these meetings, I actually, you know, they dragged me in and they said, well, you know, is there a technology solution to any of this? And I'm like, well, it sounds like you need an ERP. Blank looks across the, a room. What is an ERP system? Well, it's an enterprise resource planning system. You know, it manages payroll and HR and, you know, logistics and stuff like that. Great. Can you build one? <laughs> uh, sure. I can do that. I don't know how. I've audited them before. I've audited them before, but I'm not sure. It'll be fine. Look, I'll look into it. I'll get back to you tomorrow. No, you, you get out and you're just like, fuck, what did I just sign up to? Uh, right, OK, let's, um, let the, OK, don't panic. Don't panic. Think this one through. Sit down with the payment team. And uh, that, that led to a very, very weird conversation. Um, so, you know, and this gives you an idea of, uh, of, of just how difficult this actually is. Because, you know, they sat down in these meetings and they were like, you know, right, well, we've got to pay people. And the normal way of paying people in Sierra Leone is with cash. And what that means is that if you want to go and buy anything, like, I don't know, fuel, you actually need a kilogram of money. Because that's how I used to pay people. I used to pay people using literally kilograms of money. And occasionally I would just weigh it because it's easier to weigh a stack of bills that's like this big than it is to actually count them. You just go, okay, well, that looks like about three kilos of money. There you go. <laughs> you, know, I'll, you know, I'll have that laptop. Here you go. <laughs> um, and, you know, th th this is actually a bit of a problem because when you're talking about trying to pay tens of thousands of people and the rest of it, and the banking system has shut down, you know, we sat down in a meeting with a central bank, and the central bank guy is there with, along with the World Bank and the IMF, and it's like, well, we're going to run out of banknotes at some point. And you're just like, what do you mean you're going to run out of banknotes? You know, it's like, well, you know, we're injecting like 11 million, you know, dollars into the economy every couple of weeks, you know, and we're using the army to distribute it all, and, 
you know, it takes, a, it takes an entire battalion of soldiers a week to move the money around. Um, you know, because there's no money recirculating into the system coming back to the central bank, we're going to run out of banknotes. And you're just like, what the fuck? How do you run, you're a bank, how do you run out of money? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, like, you know, you very quickly think of some solutions in your head. And you go, ATMs, right, okay, well, there aren't any ATMs. There are eight ATMs in the country and nothing outside of Freetown, the capital. Credit cards. Well, there's no payment network for those to work with, so that's out. Um, how about online banking? Well, <laughs> fewer than one in fewer fewer than one in a hundred people has a bank account, and there's no and like most people can't read and write, so no. Uh, how about accurate staff list? Can we just sort of like work out who we need to pay? Well, no, not really, because that doesn't exist either, because there are only 12 surnames in the country, and it turns out that roughly, roughly, you know, like, no, roughly, we think that roughly 60% of the staff list from the Ministry of Health actually might be ghosts, duplicate, or fraudulent. So that doesn't exist. Oh, shit. Um, well, they got lots of patronage, um, and, uh, you know, plenty of corruption. That's lots to go around. And the guys from the World Bank were like, you know, you have to get, you have to put a stop to the corruption of the patrons, or we're going to stop paying, you know. And that basically means the end of the country. So it's like, okay, well, we're, plainly we have to do something about this. So I, I screwed up making the presentation. So some solutions, and this is why I'm going to bring these guys in. So Larissa, are, are you guys still in? Are you guys still in touch with the Larissa? Larissa? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So Larissa was one of my colleagues on the payment on this uh, on, on this UNDP-led team, um, and uh, Larissa um, lives in Sierra Leone, has lived there for a very long time, and she knew Sultan and IDT Labs from some other previous project, and I was describing this meeting where it's like, yeah, we just need an ERP and you know it'll be fine, and she's like, you know, I know these guys, and that's actually what she said. She said, I know these local guys. And I was like, right, OK, well, um, plainly nobody else is going to show up. Bring him in. And so Sultan showed up. Uh, wave Sultan. Uh, this guy showed up. And he showed up with a laptop held together with some sticky tape. And uh, he then showed me his code. And this is the key moment, really, because we started talking, and we started talking Python. And then he shows me his code. And I'm like, well, actually, this is pretty good. You know, structure's good. You know, it's like, I can logically follow it. I can actually read this. This is actually quite good. It's like, you know, how long did it take you to read this, you know, to, to do this? Oh, like a week or whatever. You know, and it's like, this is actually quite well thought through. And, and, and then they showed me the, um, it turns out they'd used open ERP before to build the, the human resources system for a local cell phone provider, which is quite small. It's got like two, well, no, it's about a thousand something odd users. But it was really good. Um, they implemented features like, for example, to combat tardiness. If you don't log into your workstation, um, the system schedules a meeting with your manager. <laughs> if you don't show up for the meeting with the manager, it automatically fires you. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Afrocell, this, this little cell phone finder, had a 100% attendance rate. And, and, and what really actually sold it to me is that, you know, because I've been working on the other phone infrastructure stuff, I've been talking to the, the, um, the, the, the CEO of Afrocell, and he was like, yeah, the system keeps firing me automatically. Because, <laughs> you know, because what it would do is it would say, you haven't gone to your workstation. It would then schedule a meeting with himself, because he's the CEO. <laughs> it's like, I'm, the, schedule, no, the system schedules a, ma a meeting with your manager, which was him. And then, of course, he never bothered to log into it to say that, yes, he's got a legitimate reason for not showing up to work. So the system fired him every week. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know what? If you can do it, if you can do it for a little mobile phone company, I mean, what's the difference? Like 1,000 people, 30,000 people. It's just scaling, isn't it, right? Yeah? You know, I just have to invent some business process and stuff. It, it'll be fine. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I'm grossly oversimplifying. Um, so, you know, like, that gave me confidence that they could do it. 
And I'm like, you know, it turns out that it, it turns out that I'm also the world's worst, most motivational speaker because I think uh, I remember in one meeting with um, Sultan and the gang, it was like, you know, well, you know, I'm, we're going to give you the job of building this thing. Um, it's going to have to be done in record. You know, it's going to be the world's fastest large-scale ERP deployment. It's going to be the the the, the fastest large-scale you know payment system deployment. But I believe you can do it principally because if it all goes horribly wrong and the country collapses, the British Army will pull me out, but you guys will have to stay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, it's a, I'm, a sh I'm a terrible motivational speaker. Um, so it turns out that um, we did discuss in those meetings a number of crazy ideas to try and get money into Sierra Leone. At one point, we even discussed dollarizing the economy. It's like, you know, they don't, they're running out of banknotes, right? So why don't we just introduce US dollars? We'll just make US dollars the currency. That'll work well, won't it? I mean, what, what, what could go wrong? Look at Iraq. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, let's just abandon this idea and move swiftly onwards. <laughs> What could possibly go wrong? So, so and, that turned, and then that discussion turned into, well, OK, what can we use that aren't banknotes, that doesn't involve disrupting or totally cratering the economy? Well, what about mobile phone credit? Because mobile phone credit is, 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 is pretty much cash, right? You know, if, if you can turn mobile phone credit, OK, well, why don't we just use mobile money? 40% of people here have a phone. You know, if they can't read an SMS message, they can find somebody else who can read an SMS message. They can, they can talk to an interactive voice system. Yeah, all right, let's, let's, let's make mobile money. No problem, right? And then you find out that, in fact, actually, um, a lot of what you need doesn't exist. <laughs> because, you know, like, one company had a mobile money scheme, Airtel, and this is uh, a happy nurse with an Airtel thing, um, but they only covered like 20% of the population. So it's like, right, well, we need to get the other companies on board, and they don't have a mobile money system at all. So we're just going to have to force them to make a mobile money system with the systems that they have, with a presidential decree. <laughs> which I wrote at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know, it's 3 a.m. Uh, they've given me policy control. OK. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let's make it legal. And, and of course, you know, if you've seen Star Wars, there's this wonderful scene where the emperor is there, and he's like, you know, but sir, is it legal? I will make it legal. <laughs> <laughs> So we ended up having to extend the, the entire system. We ended up having to create a digital money ecosystem, which is sort of hilarious. So, and this is the approach that was come up with. So it's like, OK, so we have a comparatively advanced, and I use that word very, very loosely, comparatively advanced mobile phone-based digital payment ecosystem. Yeah, that's kind of sort of true at the beginning. It was very true by the end. We've got a good, solid local uh, social enterprise, these guys, who are able to pull it off. And we have um, mobile phones everywhere. Mobile phones are really, really cheap. It turns out that we bought something like 10,000 little sort of, you know, cheap $10 phones. And uh, it's given away like candy. You know, it's like, this is how you get, this is your mobile wallet. This is how you get your money. Have a phone. Uh, and that kind of worked. They were terrible phones. They, the, the, I still hallucinate the ringtone from those horrible little red phones because they were everywhere and they only had one ringtone and it drove me nuts. I, I you know, I sort of doze occasionally, I still hear it. Um, and how to work a miracle. So, right, I, at this point, I'm, I don't know, Sultan, can you see, can you see my slide? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Please, God, please Skype God, do Just not fail about. us now, Just okay? About. I sacrificed okay. a vegan this morning for the, to, so that this would work. Sorry. 
OK, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to describe um, the problems, and then I'm going to get Sultan and these guys here to actually kind of like talk through a bit of the solution. So there was no worker ID scheme. Um, we couldn't use fingerprints and biometrics um, because uh, uh, that was a cross-contamination risk. If you were ill and you swiped a fingerprint reader and left sweat all over it and then somebody else came along and swiped it, you would get Ebola and die. Not cool. <laughs> Most people, you know, and, and they weren't really keen on that. So um, we had to come up with a way of enrolling people biometrically into the scheme, because bear in mind, only one in five people can read and write. And most people don't know what their birthday is. And some people don't know how to spell their names. And some people might get different people to write their name out. And it might come out differently, but we'll be the same guy. And then some people share mobile phone. It is a disaster. So um, these guys, so we, we used ODK to uh, make an enrollment application. And uh, we used, what was the open source uh, facial recognition framework that you ended up using? Um, it's, it's called OpenBR. OK, can you describe it? So um, it, it is, um, you know, it, 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 it is built off, um, you know, an, an, an excellent comp computer vision um, library called OpenCV. So um, what we did was, um, you know, we just wrote a, a, um, a, t a tiny script on, t on, t on top of, our, of OpenBR that will, in, in essence, you know, compare the the the, <laughs> the feature um, the pictures that was um, brought back from from the field. Yeah, we, 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 one of the things that we did do is we had great fun. But so they 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 were they were in the process of trialing in Sierra Leone this this voter registration pro this voter registration program, which um, we completely wrecked because we took their voter registration machines and dismantled them all to to make our to make our to make our health worker enrollment kit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They, yeah. I, I, think, yeah. I think they're still very pissed off with us for doing that, yes, aren't they? Yes, they, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, they are, they are. <laughs> yeah, we wrecked a few million dollars worth of work. Eh, whatever. Um, so, data repository, we used OpenERP. Odoo, oh, anyone here worked on OpenERP? No. Oh, well, never mind. They're all probably off somewhere. Um, the dedupe, dedupe is quite interesting because um, the terrible data and the rest of it meant that these guys, you know, had to deduplicate everything. So, um, you know, they implemented this library, and it, it worked, right? Yeah, of course. Of, yes, it, it 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 did work. Um, the the problem was the the quality of the of of, of the data. You know, we 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 received was extremely poor. You, you know, the, the, we would even have we would have data in which has um only the individual's name has been sub so, so supplied. You, you know, and we had 20,000 um, records, you know. Um, there were no, there, there were not enough unique IDs, you know, things things that you can use, like streets, um, et cetera, et cetera. Telephone numbers were, were absent for, for, for most of the, 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 um, the, the, the records. So, you know, so but that meant we, we, we could not use the traditional way of um, the of duplicating. We could not use maybe SQL. So um, we had to resort to the um, And the dupe is basically a, a, a machine learning library. And it is, it, it is, it is written in, in Python. You know, it is, it's actually a quite, a quite in, in, in interesting and uh, robust piece of, of, well, of, 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 of work. If you're interested in machine learning, it's well worth looking at DDU because it's really, really quick. And it, it basically saved our bacon. Um, well, so, well, so, <laughs> well, it, is, it, it, is, it, it, it is implemented in Python, so you, you, you're not going to get the, the, the blazing fast speeds. No. But, um, you know, speed was not too much of, you know, we, we were more in, in, interested um, in, in, you know, recall and, pre, and, and 
precision trying to find the the, the, the right balance than the, the speed you know we had the this was uh, the, 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 the duplication routine was was being run you know at, at night so okay. um you know we didn't care too much about about how long as so long as you know the, 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 the aware result um yeah. in the in the morning for um, an analyst to go through so so what we did was um you, you know if the we you know the the, the algorithm would spit out um, a score, and uh, and uh, when, when what we did, if the score was above a, a certain <laughs> threshold, you know, we would uh, the the application would go go ahead and and deactivate or basically merge the the, the duplicate sets. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and and if if it was between if if it was, if it was below that threshold, it was sent into like a, a bin. Um, from which you know um, <laughs> analyst would now it was sent to a bin and you know the the, the difference between the two entities being 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 yeah, being compared we, was then, was displayed and then an analyst will now go through and say okay is this um, you know is this right or is this wrong and the interesting thing is we, um, the the feedback from the the, the, the analyst was looped back into the the the, the training sets we 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 used for. Dupe, so you know it was continuing yeah, it, it, iterative, it, it, iterative it, training. Exactly. So, well, what communications? Um, people can't read and write and stuff. So uh, you know, we we ended up using uh, SMS, dumb phones. Uh, we used. Uh, we ended up with interactive voice recognition and uh, another open source product. And uh, you know. Corruption's a way of life, so uh, you know we just used the. Uh, was did we end up using all the auditing features? That, that was that the, the were the auditing features that were used? Were those part of the OpenERP core feature set? Well, no, no. In in in, in fact, a lot of the in in, in fact at, at the, the the end of, of the day, you know what we we, we the about the, the only thing we we used number one was the the core ERP. <laughs> the framework, you know, the ability to, you know, to, to to develop fast, you know, have the 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 user interface there for you, you know, we we, we had to 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 build a, a, a lot of of the things the um on on, on yeah, top yourself of of, of 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 the core, yeah. So um, we I have to speed things up because we're starting to run out of time here. Um, <laughs> okay. So uh, um. The government demanded that all the data be hosted in Sierra Leone, which it turns out is a terrible plan because there's no power grid, no data centers, no good system means, no infrastructure, no nothing. And I ended up just bullying them into letting us host it all at Amazon. <laughs> it turns out that Amazon's actually fantastic for this sort of thing because, you know, instantly available. They got all these tools and the rest of it. I don't know if my friend Catherine is here from, from Amazon. She, yeah, there you go. Yeah, good work. Keep it up. Like, well done, Amazon, for, for producing inf instant infrastructure, you know, because without them, we'd be fucked. <laughs> um, deployment management and uh, DevOps. So really interestingly, actually, the speed of development is actually quite, of this system was frightening. In the space of under a month, how many commits did you guys put in? So, um, you know, Firstly, we had to 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 put together the entire system in just under two weeks, um, and uh, two weeks. you know, so it meant it, it meant a lot of time at the at the at the office. It meant a lot of energy doing a lot of coffee and so on. And uh, and 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 the, the you know um, you know we, we had to 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 respond to to number one how the system was being was being used number two what was what was happening on 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 underground so in the in in the, in the space of um, and then and, and and number three you know the in the in the list the management process that um, ex existed. So in the in the space of a, of, a, of 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 a month for from for from you know the time we deployed the 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 system we had to make like we had to make over three 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 hundred commits 
you know, 300 commits, you know, um, we had to, to, to deploy the, we had, we had to, 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 to push to, you know, the, 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 the deployment and, 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 and deployment like several times a day. So, so yeah, a frightening pace of development. Two, the core system was built in two weeks which if you think about building a huge ERP system in two weeks, that's amazing. And no one in their right mind should ever try to do that ever again. No, 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 no. I yeah, still have... Don't do that. Um, that that's, that that's software development that's unsafe at any speed, right? It is. It is. It, it is. I still ha ha have some, 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 some health concerns from, you know, <laughs> yeah. from, from, from taking in too much caffeine. So, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. people go for like three days with, with, with us. <laughs> yeah. Sleep. yeah, three days of coding without, oh God. Uh, and yeah, and it worked. That's the amazing, Code, it turns out that coding for your life really. <laughs> Open source software restored faith in the ability of the government and systems to be run honestly. You can't put a price on that. People were paid on time. 100% of the time, for the first time in Sierra Leone's entire history. But, as Francis and Howard will tell you, business process development implementation is much harder than technology in these contexts. Because what these guys did was they organized teams to actually, on motorcycles, to go and register every single healthcare worker in hundreds of facilities across the country over no paved roads, um, oftentimes in the face of intense, like, intense resistance. There were car crashes, people nearly died. And, you know, these guys here are actually organizational geniuses, and they actually deserve at least as much credit, if not more credit, than, than, than uh, certainly me and the rest of the foreigners. So please give it up for Harold and Francis. And Leslie, wherever you are. Here are some results. So you'll see that Guinea, our program kind of failed. Uh, Liberia, program kind of failed. Sierra Leone, number of Ebola response workers paid on time, every time, 21,058. Total number of workers in the country, the remainder were paid by NGOs, uh, 27,000. The total that we managed to manage successfully, 100%, and the one was on digital money that were paid flawlessly, 100%. <laughs> we even sent some people to the Anti-Corruption Commission. People now know that if there is a system there, it works, and it is possible to pay, be honest, and you know, there are strong incentives to be honest. Um, and uh, Sierra Leone owes a debt to these guys for building a system that actually restored people's faith in the ability of that system to deliver. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we won, really, and uh, you know, and so here's some good news. As of today, the Ebola epidemic worldwide is over. And uh, that calls for a little dance, really. Because, uh, like, uh, and you can all get up and dance too, if you like. We just want to say something to the people then. And, and no that's pretty much uh, the end of uh, Nobody wanna see give it up rise. for the, give it up for these guys. I don't know if you can see the video. Don't even know what to say. Thank God that it's over. No time for the haters. Watch me do as on two, as on two, as on two. Now watch me do as on two, as on two, as on two. Now watch me do as on two, as on two, as on two. Now watch me do as on two, as on two, as on two. Follow me then. He will have mash up the nation. It has no frustration. Left some family pumping. Put the one who can't keep us in. Oh, mama, oh, mama. Oh, papa, oh, papa. I 
gone, God, that is gone. The new day has come. So go, 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 Hey, even got the fishermen to dance. Now watch me do as one two, as one two, as one two. And if you've ever worked on any of those open source projects, you owe yourself a huge round of applause because without you guys out here, without your development effort, none of this is possible. They put in the hard work to save their country. You made it possible. And if you've got any interest whatsoever in doing uh, uh, IT in humanitarian aid or development, um, you can always get hold of me or Sultan and we'll, we're, we're always happy to talk. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and that's me. <laughs> Take a picture of the slide. Um, I'll, post, I'll get the slides posted somewhere or other, and you, know, you can ask whatever questions you want. Including the dance of hope. In including, including the dance <laughs> of hope. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Also, offshores, I mean... Uh, the we have, like, five minutes. Yeah, we have five minutes for questions. So please, anyone who has questions, proceed to one of the mics on the right or the left side. So, let's see. Five minutes, go. Yeah. So, I will start with the lady at microphone three. Please proceed. I'm not AD, but that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks for your work, but I'm going to break the joy. No thanks for your talk. I find it in several ways racist, and I wanted it to be said. Okay. Okay. All right, that's fine. I'll... Thank you. It's free. Yeah. Okay. Uh, please. So um, I would like to ask, so, uh, given oh. uh, the work you have done, yep. what is the legacy that has remained now that the Ebola epidemic is over? The systems that were built remain. So, um, excuse me. If, yeah. So um, at this point, if I can just, just come in to, 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 to answer the question. Um, so, so what's happening now is the, the, date, the database has been transitioned over to the, the, the Ministry of Health. Um, about 30 minutes or so before this, I, 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 I was in a meeting with um, representatives from the Ministry and even representatives from 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 from, from eHealth, since you know they, they are the the, the, the the ICT partners of yeah. the, the, yeah. the Ministry of Health. So 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 the the infrastructure is still very very much in any place. They are finding new ways to to you know. To, to utilize it. Okay, great. Thank you. Ne next. Next, next one, next number four, please. Um, so this is kind of an evil question because after all, it was Ebola, many people died. But do you think that maybe this crisis was in some way a good thing because we have now infrastructure in Sierra Leone and things are better than before? Well, in, 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 in terms of in, in terms of things being been been, been, been better, been better than before, I, I would not say it is. But but, but at least we um, now um, you know you know we understand what sh should be done, and I'm guessing you, you know the the authorities understand how to 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 to, to respond better um, if, if something like like this happened. Things like this happen here on on a smaller scale. You know, every almost every week there there are measly breakouts. There are you know, um, dysentery breakouts and so and so on. And now I, th I think you know the, the infrastructure to rapidly um, respond to these things um, is there. You know, from 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 any bad thing, there are the uh, the, the good aspects, the good lessons that that can be be, be learned. I, I just hope it is it's been learned um, in, in in our case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Oh, yeah. yeah. Person. Hi. Uh, I guess this is more of a more of a business question. But with so many interested parties, you mentioned Nat Hope being a 
conglomeration of 30 plus NGOs, mm -hmm. UNDP, IMF, World Bank, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Having to move so quickly, what sort of reporting did you have to do? Did you have to get things cleared? You mentioned you know millions of dollars coming in every week. That's a lot of money, and people usually like to have some sort of standard on that. Yeah, so I, I can I, I can answer that. Um, so there was a lot of reporting, um, and honestly, to get the systems developed at the right kind of speed and at the right kind of pace. What ended up happening was that many of the systems and checks and balances and controls um, were, they weren't <coughs> bypassed, they ended up being abbreviated. Because, for example, um, any, any job that's over about $100,000, you're supposed to have competitive bids. If you're talking about trying to build an enterprise ERP in like, you know, three weeks, there's, there's simply no time to do that. So what ended up happening was that we told Sultan and the guys from IDT Labs, you go ahead and start developing all of this stuff because it has to be deployed right now. We will go and manipulate the system to enable that to happen. And in the meantime, the government, World Bank, IMF, and the rest of it will work through the finances to prime the pump so that when the system is ready to be deployed, the money is there. Everything collapsed together. I mean, this was a real emergency. The one other important thing it's probably worth saying is that there was no template for this sort of thing. Nobody knew how to do it. Nobody knew how to manage it. And in many cases, we had to invent everything on the spot. And massive credit is due to Sultan and his guys and, and the teams on the ground there because they had to invent the business process. They had to invent the management on the spot. That, even here, that would be an impossible challenge. Thank you. Thank you. I think... And I don't really care if you all think I'm horribly racist or whatever, because, you know, no, like, I, I have a huge amount of respect for these guys. They saved their nation. Yeah. I mean, a signal of hope. Thank you so much. I think we can wrap it up for now. We'll run out of time for questions. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, um, and if anyone wants to find me, I'll be in the smoking lounge. Thank <laughs> you.